Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about um, how you can use the development version of R at JSPC um, and a little bit about how you can uh, use it in your computer, um, depending on how much time we have. Um, and so, this is particularly useful if you want to access the latest versions of Biconductor pa packages or also when you're preparing one. Um, because the idea is that when you submit a package by a conductor, it has to be using the latest, um, the upcoming R version. Uh, most of, well, uh, depends on what time of the year we are in, but that's basically it. Um, and so uh, these arose because of um, we're in a situation right now where a uh, spatial experiment a package that we use quite a bit has changed. Um, but it has only changed on the what's called the bioconductor development branch. Um, and because we want to avoid the pain of having to remake a lot of objects with that version uh, later on, um, we're getting a bit of uh, ahead of the curve and making the switch now. And special IBD, um, which uh, imports special experiment, change um, also. So here's a link to uh, to the Google Doc for today, uh, which I have open over here. And so you'll see there's quite a bit of code and things to talk about today. Um, and so you don't necessarily need to install any packages, um, um, but like, um, uh, I mean, you'll, you'll see more code later on today. So yeah, you don't necessarily need to install a remote of IC manager. So let me get started with a bit of the background on this. Um, and so Biconductor is this repository of packages, right? So these were like uh, authors can share their code and um, or make, um, and uh, it goes through like a peer review process to get in. But once it's in, it also goes through a series of tests and this is to help detect problems before a user sees them, right? Um, and in particular, they test uh, on three operating uh, systems, Linux, Mac, and Windows, and they do this daily for their software packages. Um, now, the, this is like quite a bit of effort because if you remember, Bioconductor has over 2,000 software packages. Um, uh, so it's a lot of computation time to test 2,000 packages on three operating systems. Now, they don't, not only do that, they do test it in, in two branches of Biconductor, what's called the release version and the development version, shortened to DEVEL. Um, and so that is ultimately 2,000 times three times two, right? Um, ends up being quite a bit, right? Um, Right, so it's like 12,000 12, um, package tests that they do daily, right? Um, so it's a lot of compute power. The, they write grants to help support all this compute power that they use, right? Um, um, and so most of us, when we use Biconductor, we're using the Biconductor release version, which is intended, right? It's intended for most users to, to use that version because it has been, uh, thoroughly tested before. And how do we know it has been tested before? That's because there's the development branch where um, uh, package are on the development branch for six months before they make it into the release branch. Um, most of the time, unless it's a new one. Um, and this is a testing ground for, for developers where they're allowed to like make any changes that they think are necessary for the future but also have time to have Biconductor test the packages for them, see if anything is breaking, uh, and then fix, have enough time to fix things um, before users actually encounter these versions of the, of the software, right? Um, and so that's the general scenario, but it, Biconductor Develop ends up being also what users of the latest tools use. And that's actually our case right now with spatial experiment. Um, and um, it's why I'm like, I'm going through all this process of explaining um, like 
I'm empowering you know you to to um, to access this bioconductive development branch, which is a little bit can be a bit harder at times. Um, and so, why we're doing this? Okay, so authors or the developers of packages they're supposed to fix uh, things and then add new features on the develop branch of Bioconductor. Um, but um, if they encounter a bug that is really important, then Bioconductor encourages, encourages authors to make that change also on the release branch of Bioconductor, right? Um, um, so I, a lot of times, um, um, go a little beyond this. And then if I'm adding a new feature to a package, I tend to add it also to the release branch, right? It's not the intention, but um, I normally like, I want people to be, to have access to the, the, the latest features. And so that's why I tend to add them to the release branch. Now, um, 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 this ultimately also gives time for users to adjust to changes. So like if an author decides to remove a function, it's remove on by conductor develop first, then that gives everyone else time to make sure that they didn't need that function, right? particularly authors of other packages. Um, then uh, when uh, it makes it to release, then users are given a six month period where they're told like this function is about to be removed. It's gonna give you an error in the future if you don't, if you, if you keep using it. And then six months after that, then you'll say like, okay, now it's actually in there, right? Um, and so this happened with special experiment where because of the peer review process, uh, the, the reviewers asked the authors to remove some things. Um, and that's why special experiment, all these changes are only on the development branch right now. They didn't want to immediately like destroy any work people were doing, right? Um, um, uh, but because I mean, Lucas Weber is our collaborator. We know quite a bit about what's happening with, with spatial experiment. And we know that like, it's gonna be a major change. We wanna go ahead and make that change. Now, um, I met with uh, Hina yesterday. And when I was explaining this, uh, um, I should have taken note of all the analogies I used then. But, um, um, there's also another solution, which is, I would call it the chimera solution, which is when you mostly use bioconductor release, but then install the development versions of some of some key packages. Now that is like teaching someone how to play with fire um, because that scenario is not tested by bioconductor, right? My conductor doesn't have the capability to test scenarios where like you mix and match packet, uh, versions of packages, right? Um, um, and so, uh, yeah, you should really only do this if you know very well the package that you're installing from GitHub into your release version of my conductor. Um, and even then, uh, it can be quite tricky and so, you, you can see people that run into these problems where they're like, oh, I had this version of R and I tried to install a version of GitHub from this package. And now I don't know why I'm getting all these weird errors. And that's because developers never got a chance to see that, right? Because it's not tested. And so it's not supported then. And you're basically on your own at that point, right? If you want to burn down the field, go ahead and do it. But like no firefighter is going to come, right? <laughs> type of thing. Um, and so at times it can be useful to do that, but I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna um, encourage you to avoid that situation as much as possible. And that is made easy for us as JHPC users um, because Casper Daniel Hansen, who's um, a professor at um, Hopkins Biostatistics, he maintains multiple versions of R uh, the cluster system and makes it really, really easy for us to use. And so um, here I'm gonna have things on two windows just to show you a bit. 
And so right now I, on this session, um, I logged into the cluster and I curious Sage to get a compute node. And I want to type module avail. Sorry, there's just some, I need to move the zoom, zoom window around. Um, and so if you type that, you'll see a bunch of uh, software that is available for users. Um, some of it is actually maintained by us, by Libre, by our team. Um, but then if you look at this core section, module files core, I'm just, I just press space to advance when I press space again, just to go to the end, now I can scroll back. Um, under the module files core, there's a bunch of Conda R versions. And so you'll see here, there's like Conda R 3.6, which is from, I don't know, two or three years ago, 3.6X, then four, 4.0x, 4.1, 4.1x, but there's also R Um And so if you type module conda, sorry, module load conda underscore R, you will load the default version, which you can see with this capital D, which right now is 4.1.x. Um, so that 4.1.x is what will become in a few days, 4.1.3. So this is the latest release version um, that got compiled recently. Um, um, and that's what most people use. And this is what's currently tied to back on the release um, as of today. But then there's also RDevel over here, which right now will become, it's what will become R4.2. Um, and R4.2 will be get, will get publicly released um, uh, normally at the end of April. Um, um, that's when like the big R changes are made typically. Um, and so if you load R, um, your packages will be installed. You'll, see, you'll, load, you'll get this message and it tells you like, oh, um, sorry, an automatic user library has been created in case it didn't exist. And the location for it is your home directory, R, and then the text that matches the, the exact version of the conda R, right, that you used. And so right now, in my case, I already changed it to Bevel. And so um, my packages are, are gonna be installed at like tilde forward slash R forward slash Bevel. Um, if, I, if I load, um, uh, oops, forgot to load. If I load conda r 4.1.x, open r, um, then it says here the same message, but now it points to 4.1.x, right? Uh, so that's where all your packages will be installed. Um, and that's um, why you probably um, will be using, right? Now, um, Abby ran into the scenario where she used RDevel around this time of the year, last year. And so I wanna point out that forward slash RDevel changes meaning over years. And so um, if you're in that situation, before you go ahead with anything that I'm gonna do, you might wanna go into that directory and like just delete everything there. Um, because that, those are gonna be packages that you installed a year ago, which was the case for Abby. And um, you don't want to go into, that would no longer be a chimera. It would be like, I don't know, a Frankenstein type of thing. Right, so you don't want, you don't want that. Um, so with that background, Let's say you're making the switch from R 4.1.x and you want to switch to R Devel. And so I wrote a blog post about this that you can read later if you want. But the main idea of this blog post is like, let's just look at our inventory of the things that we have installed um, and let's list them out. Um, so it's almost like if you're moving houses or apartments, you look at everything that you own and you say, like, hey, I have a blender. I have. Uh, frying pan, right? 
Um, and so when you move into your new place, uh, then you buy the exact, uh, like you buy a new blender, you buy a new frying pan. They might not be exactly the same because you might get like a newer model of your blender, right? Um, uh, now, when you move, you don't need to do that, right? You can always move to your new place and then decide like, hey, what do I need? Oh, well, I guess I, I, guess I need a frying pan. I guess I need a blender, right? And then buy those things again, right? Um, so both options are completely valid. Uh, um, and uh, it's a little bit of like, hey, do you want to be a bit of a hoarder and keep track of everything you've had uh, in the past um, or not, right? Um, and so um, if you don't have a lot of packages installed in your home directory, this could be a good option to do because then it, it simplifies the process of just remembering what are all the things that I had in my home, right? Um, and so, <clears throat> um, it all, some notes about what the code below is that it only uh, tells you what are the packages you had, like only the names, not where you installed them from. And so, with names, you can install any CRAN or Bioconductor package, but you cannot install GitHub packages. Which is why, like, look further below, you'll see that there's a lot of remotes install underscore GitHub lines. Next, if you're if you're in that, like, hey, what package am I using? What is the version of it? You, you might want to use this package version R command. Where inside quotes, you can put the package name, um, and then that will tell you what do you, what is the version you have currently installed. Um, and this will be particularly useful if you're using the very, very latest version of a package. And, um, and that's because Biconductor might take a few days to build the package and make it available to you. Um, so here's a bit of my code and I'll, and I'll explain a, a bit of that. Um, then there's also, you can, you can see further below, this is Abby Spangler's version um, where she read that blog post um, and then we walked a bit through my piece of uh, my script, and then she adapted some of it, made some notes. Um, and so either of these versions could be good for you. Um, so I'm gonna go through my version. So right now I loaded um, Conda R 4.1.x, right? Which is at this point, the, ver the my current home and the one I wanna move away from. Um, and so I want to know what I have in my uh, installed. And so for that, we're going to use this um, leap paths function, um, which is a nice function from Mar um, that will tell us where do we have actually installed the, our packages. And so at your computer, you'll get a different answer than you get at JHPC. And so I'll do this also on my computer, so you can just so you can see the difference. And so in my computer, I only have one path, and the blog post I wrote talks about doing this on your computer, where you typically only have one path. On the cluster, though, um, at JSPC, by default, you're always going to have three paths, and the first one is where uh, the one that points to your home directory. Um, um, and so that's different from these other two paths, which are actually controlled by uh, Casper Daniel Hansen. And so Casper has a list of packages that he automatically installs for you, right? Um, and so we're not gonna mess with those two. We only wanna look at the piece of, the part of the home, let's say our the home has three rooms, we only want to look at our own room. Um, we, don't, we don't want to look at everywhere else. And so uh, this line over here just um, looks at that directory and you know keeps track of what are all the packages installed there. So I have, for example, base space installed, which is not available globally, um, and in total, I have 52 packages right now on R4.1.6. Um, so um, 
I typically do this, run this code um, on my directory that uh, at my home that I call update R inside of the R directory. And in there, I've recorded the list of packages that I've had over time. So you can go back all the way to 2016 and see what are the packages. Or I mean, I can look at what are the packages I had back then, right? Um, so I actually did this on March 2nd recently. Um, so um, mm -hmm. let me run this piece of code. And so I just looked at all the packages that I have in Conda R 4.1.x, and then I save them. And I save them in a way where like, I order them by date. This will make it easy for me to find which is the latest version of um, what I had in my room uh, later on. So when I quit R, um, and at this point, I'm going to switch version to, the, to my new home. And so I'm going to use module load on the R. And in this case, I want to switch to the devel version, uh, which is what I, I do here on this comment. Um, and now, once in that, in that version, um, um, I might want to install or check that I have like BIOS manager installed. So I might I'll use these remotes. I don't need to install remotes because it's, it's already installed by Casper. And in most scenarios, if you run this, you'll see that, hey, actually, the version that you have hasn't changed. So it doesn't even need to reinstall the package, right? So that's something nice about remotes with the install CRAN option. Um, so I like this over like install the packages. Install the packages will install the package even if you already have that version, right? So install CRAN from remotes is smarter than that and won't install it if you don't need it. Now, my script here keeps track of several GitHub packages that I know I'll, I'll need um, and that um, um, if we looked at what I had before on my install vector, that only keeps track of the names of the packages, not where they came from, right? And so color out, for example, is a package that I love because it, it changes the colors of the terminal. And like if you have an error, uh, it will put it in red. Um, and so that makes it easier for me to read the output on the terminal. Uh, so I always like to have this installed. Um, and so I know that's the first thing I want to install when I, when I go to a new version so I can actually detect easily any installation errors later on. Um, so I'll typically do that um, and then load it. Um, and so my situation right now is a little bit simpler because I already installed everything. So let me, I'm going to nuke all of what, all of what I have. Um, Um, installing RDVEL just to show you how it would actually happen in, in, in a real scenario. Um, so, oh, wait. wait. Uh, so, right now, here, like, um, I actually have things on my R profile that tell me, like, hey, you're missing color up. Do you want to install it? So, I can just copy paste that from that message. Um, once you do, this will take a few seconds. Um, um, mm -hmm. Once you do, you can load color out. And now you have colors. I'll go ahead and start R mode just so that I don't get a lot of messages about it. Um, and so you'll see here, like, I have a list of packages I typically install. Some of um, and I categorize them a little bit. Like these three packages are packages I only use at JSPC. I don't really use in my computer. Um, plus a rundown R mode and SEU jobs. So all of these packages are not they're not available on CRAN or um, or by conductor. So that's why I have them listed here. There's another one I use, uh, Plink to War. This one I use for TWAS analysis. And not only do I need to install it from GitHub, I also have to install it from a specific branch on GitHub. 
So like in order to remember that, I put in all these little scripts. Um, then there's some GitHub packages like Jaffe Lab, Shiny CSV, Libfina that I install. Um, then there's some that are under development like the Combo Bodies, CSVAR, Treg, Special IBV. Um, there's one that is actually available from CRAN Harmony, but the CRAN version has a bug that has only been fixed on GitHub. So like um, I might need to install it manually. But if, um, if you look at Abby's version of the script, um, she very quickly goes to these lines of code, which are like, let's find what's the latest version of my list of packages. So we'll do that. Um, um, and then, uh, so that's another data file, right? So I mean, so that's all the uh, previous ones. Um, we'll look at the last one because they're ordered by date, remember? Um, so if we look at the last element of that vector, right, is the, the one I just made and we can load it. And that contains that install vector. Now I do the same thing again of looking at the lead paths. Um, and just I just want to see what are the ones I have currently available. I so say in this case, I already saw color out remote and, and I guess they have a dependency called server. Um, so if you compare the two, you can see, okay, what are the packages that I had before that I'm currently missing? And so here you'll notice I'm missing special experiments, special IBD, and some other ones. Um, so um, I could go ahead and then install all of them, all the missing ones, and I can install them with BioC Bio Manager install. Um, so we could go ahead and do that. Um, or you could also decide to manually install things, right? Um, so, for example, mm -hmm, maybe I just want to install, um, well, let me install a special IBD. This one might need a few dependencies, have a few dependencies. Uh, but it's, I guess, the, the most relevant example. Um, so I'm installing it from GitHub. Um, and it's installing any dependencies it had. So for example, here we can see it's installing Polychrome, uh, which is a color package with colors that if we look further above, Polychrome was on my list of packages that I'm missing, right? Um, so we'll do that. We'll see over here, for example, there's SG jobs, right? So if you tried running, um, BIOC manager install and install all the missing ones. Um, it wouldn't work for SGE jobs because SGE jobs is only available on GitHub. That's why on my script, I keep track of, of packages like that and, and how to install them. Um, but that's basically the idea. Um, um, mm -hmm. Now I chose a package that will take a bit of time to install. Um, um, instead of one that is smaller. Uh, I could have just chosen Polychrome, which is like faster to install. Um, so this, this process, depending on how long your list is, can take a while, can take like an hour or maybe half an hour, depending how many packages you have, right? Um, but um, in terms of writing code or having to, to do much, it's, it's not that complicated, right? Because uh, the script handles a lot of that for you. Now, after you're done installing, um, in my script, I have this like, oh, let me look at the current and compare them against the ones I have installed. And actually, for for many of these, uh, for a lot of these scenarios, um, my script is like not um, linear in a sense. I would go back, re-execute this, so reload like what is the list of packages I have loaded. But in particularly, what I really want to re-execute is this one, look at the current packages. And so then I can look at like which are the ones that I have now installed that I didn't have in the past. And this can happen because maybe a package added a dependency that didn't exist before. Um, um, 
um, or maybe because you manually sell something extra uh, outside of this script, right? Um, so we'll let that run for a while. And um, um, in the meantime, um, let's talk, let me link to, let me open this link over here. Um, and so I want to highlight that um, among all the JHPC file configuration files that I have um, listed on this website, the bash RC one is one where I typically advise people to add these lines of code, which I don't think you can read, so I'm going to zoom in a bit more. Um, these lines of code over here say like, hey, if you're in a compute node, or a transfer node, then load the set of modules, load git, load the git size, github, load git lfs, git load r mate, but then also load con r, and then here um, you can specify what version of r you want to use. In this example, I have 4.1. Most of you at this point have probably 4.1.x, but you can change it to be uh, bevel, for example. Um, and so uh, that's what I did on my own one. Um, and so if I open a new session, log into JHPC, uh, request a compute node, um, and if I get one, um, we'll see that it's um, um, the available version that I'm using. In the meantime, right now, special IBD here finished, install it. And so now I can use like package version, special IBD just to check what version I have. And I actually have 1.7.13. And why is that important in this example? Because we go to my conductor. Um, I want to change over here on the top, the URL from release to develop. Um, we go to the development version of my conductor. Um, the currently available version from Bioconductor is 1.7.11. And that's because after I made a change from 1.7.11 to 1.7.12, it took a few days to run uh, to, to try to, I mean, it doesn't happen every day for this package. Um, and so um, I made the change um, on, um, I guess March 3rd, no, oh, this is when it ran, sorry. I made the change on March 1st um, and then it ran, it tried to build it on March 3rd at 7 a.m. but it ran into an error. And so that's a nice thing about Biconductor is that it you know, will detect these errors and the error it ran into was, um, this error over here, that spatial image is not true. And so actually Lucas saw this error before I did and he made a pull request um, and that version is 1.7.13, which fixes this error um, that I didn't notice. So thank you, Lucas, very much for noticing that um, for the pull request. Um, and so this is a, in a scenario where like, you might wanna use the truly latest version, which is from GitHub, the one from Biconductor, um, is a little bit uh, behind. Um, but like, I don't know, in two days maybe, uh, bike conductor will have, bike conductor develop will have version 1.7.13 available. Now, if you're developing a package for bike conductor, um, when you submit it, you need to specify that your package uh, has a minimum version requirement of the developed version. So if you look at Trek, which is a package under development by by Luis, or we can look at QSVAR, which is packaged under development by Josh. Um, a package over here has to specify what version of R it works on. And so right now, we, for simplicity, we're developing on an R 4.1, but when we actually submit it, we'll need to change that to 4.2. Um, and so we could get a bit of ahead of the curve ourselves and make sure that it fully runs on R 4.2. Um, and that's actually something we're doing um, on GitHub Actions, not on not in our computers. 
just because it's a little bit simpler. But um, but we could definitely make the switch to our 4.2 for both uh, Luis and Josh, right? Um, oh, so um, let's see if I got a computer node. I haven't gotten one yet. Um, let me change my memory request. Um, Uh, see if I get one now. So, um, I mean, so that's how like your bash or C file can complement uh, the changes that we just made. Now, um, um, oh, hey, okay. I got one here. Here you can see that I'm loading conda R develop by default, and that's thanks to my bash RC file. Um, all right. So uh, even, even though you can change your bash RC, I would highly recommend that um, 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 that you also that you, know, you specify on your bash scripts um, the exact version of, of R that you want to load. So if you're using SE jobs, um, by default, it'll add a line here called module load con the R. And that will load the default version of R that's available. But you, you're, if you want your code to be fully, fully reproducible, you can add um, the specific version of R that you're running. And so here's an example that's private. It's a private link. But for the video, you can see here, it says module load conda R forward slash dbell, right? Um, and so this can be particularly useful if um, for projects that last more than six months, which is like, basically near almost all of them. Um, um, and so you can remember what was it, the exact version you used, um, and that's all. Um, now, on your computer, it's doable to install R Nivel, but it's a bit harder. And, and the difference of why it's harder is because Biconductor and actually CRAN um, they provide binary versions of packages. That means that they have compiled all the code and like uh, if the package is a C uh, or Fortran or something else, like um, it's already been compiled and then you just need to download a little file, uh, uncompress it, put it in a particular location in your computer and that's it. Right. Now for Biconductor Devel, a lot of times you'll have to deal with the source version of the package, which means that your computer will need to have all the dependencies available to compile um, the package. Um, and so um, it's a bit harder, but like there's tools that exist for all of this. And so uh, for Mac, um, CRAN actually provides you the specific versions of tools that you should use um, and these are the ones they highly recommend. And a common mistake is that people will immediately run to Homebrew. Um, and actually, CRAN advises against that. Um, you, know, you should only really use Homebrew for like some other things, uh, like Magic, for example, the Magic package you need to install, the Magic um, C library. Um, and in that case, you could use uh, Homebrew. But for most, like for example, for the C compiler, for the Fortran compiler, for all of that, CRAN provides you the specific links and instructions of what you need to use. For Windows, it's a lot simpler than for Mac because CRAN now provides this, um, this uh, file you can install called R Tools, and it, it has really nice and simple instructions on what you need to do. Um, so for most cases, Windows will be simpler for back Dr. Devel. Although, I mean, you can also run into some complicated scenarios um, with Windows. Um, Linux, um, if you're using Ubuntu, sudo app get install will be your friend. Uh, and a lot of packages, when they air out, will tell you like, hey, maybe you need to run this command uh, if you're running on Linux. And so a lot of this is, is about um, gaining the skill of looking at the error messages and basically um, finding the hint that applies to you. 
Um, if you're using other versions of Linux, then it can get really challenging. But for us at JSPC, uh, Casper Dynamic Hansen has us covered, so we don't really need to worry about that. And now you might say, like, hey, I don't want to deal with all, any installation of, of source dependencies and all of that. Well, at that point, you can actually use Bioconductor Docker, the Docker images. Um, and so the main thing here is installing Docker. Uh, you need to have uh, quite a bit of disk space left on your computer, at least like 30 or 40 gigs, um, um, just to have enough space to install like this virtual computer on your own computer. Um, and the Bioconductor in Docker images, they already provide all the system dependencies that are needed by any Bioconductor package. So this is like super nice to use. It also includes our studio, so um, um, so you can use them. Um, um, and I, I mean, I've used them at times quite a bit. Um, but um, 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 I don't use them daily. There's people. Uh, there's people I know that use them daily. Um, and um, the only thing here is that beyond a bit of this space, sometimes you need a bit of time because he needs to download the Docker image, et cetera. Um, um, uh, but this, I would say, is like, if you're running into a lot of issues with system dependencies, Docker is like, solves that um, for you. Um, and um, I know a lot of you use Mac OS, and I, uh, we could do, I guess, a much longer version. I mean, a, a full session and just install impact development on Mac OS. Um, um, it's not that challenging, but it, uh, if you follow the instructions from CRAN, if you go away from what CRAN is providing for you, then you'll run into a bunch of problems. And, um, um, and so I, like, they encourage us to use their the CRAN versions. I would also encourage you to use them avoid problems um, and um, this is the one scenario for googling will lead you on the bad direction because there's a lot of blog posts from people that hack it hack, provide a hack solution and then they write a blog post about it and so the maintainer of R on Mac uh, Simon Urbanek he has Complain like he has no control over what people write blog posts about, right? Um, and so a lot of times, if you look at the mailing list for um, our users on Mac, um, he has to explain to people like, oh, you followed a blog post that is giving you wrong advice. Use the correct advice from CRAN, please use this. Um, and then that's how you're not gonna run into problems. Um, um, so uh, it's, I mean, I feel a bit sorry for Simon because he has, he's doing a lot of stuff by himself and, um, and um, I can understand why he runs out of patience um, when people are like, when people run into the same trap again and again, right? Um, so, um, I mean, there's always like, edge scenarios where maybe you do need to hack things around, but like um, in general, Simon is really on top of things and he'll figure out a, a solution for people. Um, and um, yeah, I think um, that's most of the ideas. Let me go back to um, the script over here. I'm going to check again what are the packages that I used to have, which are the ones I'm missing. And so uh, you could do this, you know, one, one at a time and then decide, hey, do I really want these packages or not? So for example, um, right now, I don't really ne ne need to install a special experiment again because it's already installed um, on, um, um, uh, by Casper Daniel Hansen, and the version right now is matches the version um, that is available on Bioconductor Develop, which is 1.5.3. Right? If, if I go to uh, the GitHub version, um, 
a spatial experiment. Um, we look at the description file, the latest version that um, exists is 1.513, right? So I already have that. I don't necessarily need to install it again. Um, um, installing it again, though, can um, help you have control of what version of special experiment you're using. Um, because if you rely on the one that Casper installs, his script actually installs packages every day. Um, and so uh, you could run into a scenario where uh, um, um, the code can break because the package has been reinstalled. That happened to me a lot in the past. Um, um, uh, when I was developing their finder, for example. Um, and uh, the other situation here is that uh, maybe um, you won't notice that special experiments change um, um, underneath you. And, and then you're like, hey, like, why am I getting this error that I didn't know about, right? When like the code didn't change at all, right? So if you want to have more control over uh, the, um, the packages that you're using a lot, you'll want to install them on um, yourself, on your, um, basically on your room, right? So um, on our develop. And so because of that, even though it's installed system-wide, I'm gonna actually go ahead and install spatial experiment. Um, um, just because I wanna have more control over what version I'm using, um, mm, it's not, okay. I don't know why it's not letting me. Mm. All right. It lets me if I do it with the other command where I install a bunch of packages. Okay, um, yeah, I think that's it for today. Um, I hope this is useful for you in the future. Um, and um, um, if you want to, I mean, the nice thing about uh, using R development JSPC is that you can actually execute code from like your R Studio window into the, into a terminal, right? And so a lot of times you don't actually need to install RDevel on your own laptop uh, because you can just use um, you can just use it on um, uh, through the terminal here, right? Um, so um, that's why I'm not as concerned about teaching everyone how to install RDevel on, on their laptops, but um, um, I mean that could be a scenario. Um, um, and so even though I said that, I personally didn't install RDevel, which is R4.2 on my computer. And that's because I want to be able to debug some things locally. Um, 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 but it's, it's not absolutely necessary that you do it, right? Um, you can just use, you know, log into the cluster. Um, Right, log into the cluster to the terminal, and then like request a compute node, which I guess we found out that uh, can, everything is pretty busy right now. I don't know if I'll get one. Um, but I mean, if you do, then. Um, Let me try share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. If you do, you can open R, and then um, I 
for example, this line over here, you use the Mac, you press Alt Command, and then return or enter to execute code on the terminal window instead of executing it on the console window, right? If you're using Windows, then that would be Control, Alt, Enter. Because um, typically the shortcut is Command, Enter, or Control, Enter, depending on what operating system you're using. Uh, but if you do that, then that executes the code on your console window, not on the terminal window. Um, so because of this, you can like be writing code uh, using R Studio, but then executing it um, using the devel version of R on the cluster. Uh, so I would really encourage you to use GSPC, and, um, and that way you don't need to deal with Docker or like installing version uh, devel on your laptops and stuff like that. Cool. Um, I don't know if there are any questions. Yeah. Can you hear me, Leo? Can you hear me, Leo? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, like, what happens once all of these uh, updates are pushed into the release version? Like, one, what happens? If the spatial LIBD and spatial experiment are tested and put into the release version, should we all should we change all our scripts to use the new R and the newer versions of these packages? So right now, for example, spatial experiment, the changes um, that they made on the on the release, I'm oh, sorry, on the, on the develop version of, 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 of uh, Bioconductor are not going to be available on the release um, there, um, on what is Bioconductor 3.14 right now. They'll be made available in May um, when, um, when the new release version of Bioconductor is, is, is pushed to the public. Um, and so, uh, uh, that's why, because we want to have access to the latest state changes. That that's why we're switching to use um, Bioconductor Develop right now, because um, we don't want to wait until May, uh, because we know that like the changes that the changes that they made in Special Experiment are not compatible with previous versions of Special Experiment, um, um, and so to avoid any future pain, that's why we're making the switch now. Does that make sense? Uh, I don't know. We don't hear you now, Maddie. I don't know if you. Hello? Okay, give us a thumbs up. Uh, thumbs up. All right, cool. Um, all right. Well, um, yeah, good luck, and <laughs> um, I'll see you around. Bye. Thank you.